The small town of Ravenswood was shrouded in an eerie silence as dusk settled over its narrow streets. Chris, a young and curious journalist, had just moved there for a fresh start. Drawn by the town's history of unexplained occurrences, he hoped to uncover the mysteries that lingered in the shadows. Chris rented an old Victorian house at the edge of town, a place that seemed to have an unsettling history. The previous owners had left in a hurry, leaving behind whispers of strange sightings and ghostly figures. Undeterred by the rumors, Chris decided to make it his home. As he settled in, strange things began to happen. Whispers echoed through the empty corridors, and Chris would catch glimpses of fleeting shadows from the corner of his eye. He dismissed these occurrences as mere products of an overactive imagination, until he stumbled upon an old diary hidden in the attic. The diary belonged to Emily, a former resident of the house who mysteriously disappeared decades ago. Her entries detailed a malevolent force that seemed to feed off fear, growing stronger with each passing generation. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that the presence described in the diary was still very much alive. Determined to unravel the truth, Chris delved deeper into Ravenswood's history. He discovered a pattern of unexplained disappearances that stretched back for centuries. The townspeople, tight-lipped and uneasy, refused to speak about the dark secrets that lurked beneath the surface. One evening, as Chris was poring over old newspaper clippings in the local archives, he found a faded photograph. It sent shivers down his spine. A group of townspeople from the past, each face marked with terror, standing in front of his very house. Among them was Emily, her eyes pleading for help. The date on the photograph matched the day she vanished. Haunted by the discovery, Chris became consumed by a sense of foreboding. The diary hinted at a ritual that could break the curse, but it required sacrifices that echoed through the ages. The townspeople had been unwitting pawns in a sinister game, and Chris was determined to end it. Chris gathered the scattered pieces of the puzzle, determined to confront the malevolent force that gripped Ravenswood. He sought out the oldest residents, coaxing them to reveal the town's long-buried secrets. Each revelation sent a chill down his spine. The curse was tied to a tragic event in Ravenswood's past, a forbidden love that ended in betrayal and death. The malevolent force, a vengeful spirit, sought retribution for the sins committed centuries ago. The ritual described in Emily's diary was the only way to appease the spirit and break the cycle of darkness. Armed with this knowledge, Chris enlisted the help of a few brave souls willing to challenge the shadows that plagued their town. Together, they deciphered the ritual's intricacies and identified the sacrifices required to banish the vengeful spirit. The task ahead was harrowing, and the townspeople trembled at the thought of confronting the darkness that had haunted them for so long. As the night of the ritual approached, Ravenswood descended into an unsettling stillness. The air was thick with tension, and the shadows seemed to grow more menacing. Chris, guided by the cryptic instructions in the diary, led the group to the town's long-forgotten cemetery. In the heart of the graveyard, they began the ritual, a somber and ancient dance that echoed with the weight of centuries. The night became a battleground between the living and the vengeful spirit, as the sacrifices were made in the hope of breaking the curse. The air crackled with energy, and the townspeople held their breath, waiting for a sign that their ordeal was finally over. But just as they believed the ritual had succeeded, an ominous laughter echoed through the cemetery. The vengeful spirit, far from appeased, manifested in a swirling vortex of darkness. It spoke with Emily's voice, revealing the true extent of the tragedy that had befallen Ravenswood. Chris, undeterred, faced the spirit head-on, armed with the knowledge that forgiveness was the key to breaking the curse. In a heart-wrenching plea, he spoke of understanding and compassion, acknowledging the pain that had festered for centuries. The spirit wavered, torn between vengeance and the possibility of release. As the first light of dawn touched the horizon, the vengeful spirit dissipated, leaving behind an exhausted but triumphant group of townspeople. Ravenswood, freed from the shackles of its dark past, slowly came back to life. The shadows retreated, and the town's residents dared to hope for a future unburdened by the weight of ancient curses. 
The story of Chris and Ravenswood became a cautionary tale, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of malevolent forces. The locals spoke of it in hushed whispers, claiming it was haunted. One gloomy evening, driven by curiosity and a sense of adventure, Albert decided to explore the mysterious house. The mansion loomed in the distance, its windows shattered and doors creaking in the wind. Albert hesitated for a moment before pushing the rusted gate open. As he stepped onto the overgrown path, an eerie chill ran down his spine. The air seemed thick with an unsettling energy. The door groaned as Albert pushed it open, revealing a dark and dusty foyer. A faint odor of decay lingered in the air. Undeterred, Albert pressed on, his footsteps echoing through the silent halls. He felt as though unseen eyes were watching his every move. The mansion revealed its secrets slowly. In a forgotten room, Albert discovered old photographs and letters. They hinted at a tragic tale of a family torn apart by betrayal and greed. The more Albert uncovered, the more entangled he became in the web of the mansion's dark history. Late one night, as Albert delved deeper into the mansion, he heard whispers echoing through the corridors. Flickering candlelight illuminated ghostly figures in old-fashioned attire. The air grew colder and a disembodied voice murmured, Leave this place or face the consequences. Undeterred, Albert pressed on, determined to unravel the mystery. Little did he know that the mansion held more than just forgotten memories. The following days found Albert consumed by his quest to uncover the truth. His nights were haunted by restless dreams, and the whispers seemed to follow him wherever he went. Despite the warnings, Albert couldn't resist the pull of the mansion, driven by an unexplainable force. One evening, Albert stumbled upon a hidden chamber concealed behind a bookshelf. The room was filled with antique furniture covered in dusty sheets. In the center stood an ornate mirror that seemed to reflect more than just the dimly lit room. As Albert gazed into it, the air thickened and the whispers intensified. The mirror revealed glimpses of a bygone era, a family torn apart by betrayal and tragedy. Albert watched in horror as the ghostly figures reenacted the events that led to their demise. He saw the patriarch's greed, the sibling rivalry, and the desperate plea for forgiveness that went unanswered. As Albert tried to make sense of the spectral visions, he felt a cold hand on his shoulder. He turned to find himself face to face with a ghostly figure, a young woman with hollow eyes and a tattered dress. She pointed towards the mirror, her voice a faint whisper, help us find peace. Compelled by an inexplicable sense of duty, Albert vowed to uncover the truth and bring closure to the tormented souls trapped within the mansion. Little did he know that the sinister force that bound them was stronger than he could have ever imagined. Determined to bring peace to the restless spirits, Albert delved even deeper into the mansion's history. The ghostly figures guided him, leading him to hidden rooms and forgotten passages. Albert meticulously pieced together the puzzle of the family's tragic fate uncovering a tale of betrayal, greed, and a long-buried secret. One stormy night, as Albert delved into the mansion's archives, he discovered a hidden letter. The parchment spoke of a cursed artifact, an ancient family heirloom that fueled the darkness within the mansion. The letter hinted that destroying the artifact might free the spirits bound by its malevolent influence. Driven by newfound purpose, Albert embarked on a perilous journey to locate the cursed artifact. The mansion seemed to resist his every step, its walls shifting and doors closing behind him. Yet, guided by the ghostly figures, Albert pressed on. In the heart of the mansion, he found a hidden chamber adorned with arcane symbols. In its center lay the cursed artifact, a centuries-old family heirloom with an ominous aura. Albert hesitated for a moment knowing that destroying it would unleash the full force of the vengeful spirits. As he lifted the artifact, the room trembled and ghostly apparitions manifested around him. The air became heavy with sorrow and regret. Albert, undeterred, raised the artifact high and brought it crashing to the ground. The mansion convulsed, 
its ancient foundation shaking as if the earth itself was rebelling against the release of the spirits. The ghostly figures faded away, their tormented expressions replaced with serene tranquility. The mansion, once filled with malevolent energy, now stood silent and still. In the aftermath of this supernatural ordeal, the townsfolk noticed a change in the atmosphere surrounding the mansion. No longer shrouded in mystery and fear, the once abandoned house seemed to breathe with a newfound calmness. Albert, though exhausted by the harrowing experience, felt a sense of accomplishment. The spirits had found peace, and the mansion's dark history was laid to rest. As he stood outside the mansion, a gentle breeze whispered through the trees, carrying with it a faint voice, a voice filled with gratitude and serenity. The townspeople, unaware of the supernatural events that transpired, marveled at the sudden transformation of the mansion. Albert, however, carried the memories of the haunted nights, the ghostly figures, and the chilling whispers. As time passed, the tale of Albert's courageous journey became a local legend, a story told to thrill-seeking individuals who dared to explore the outskirts of town. The mansion, once a place of dread, now stood as a testament to one man's determination to confront the shadows of the past. Gwen Williams, a young and ambitious journalist, had always been drawn to the mysteries that lurked in the corners of the world. Her insatiable curiosity led her to the small, seemingly tranquil town of Ravenswood, where a series of unexplained disappearances had left the community in a state of perpetual fear. As Gwen delved into the town's history, she discovered a pattern. Every decade, on the eve of the harvest moon, someone vanished without a trace. The locals whispered about a curse, a malevolent force that claimed a soul as an offering to the shadows that dwelled in the ancient woods surrounding Ravenswood. Determined to uncover the truth, Gwen interviewed the townsfolk, each one guarded and hesitant to share their darkest secrets. She learned of a forbidden ritual that supposedly kept the curse at bay, a ritual that required the townspeople to participate in a solemn ceremony under the moonlit sky. Gwen's investigation led her to the enigmatic Dr. Elias Blackwood, the town's reclusive historian. Dr. Blackwood, haunted by the shadows of his own past, reluctantly agreed to guide Gwen through the ritual, warning her that the line between the living and the dead blurred on the night of the harvest moon. As Gwen prepared for the ritual, she couldn't shake the feeling that unseen eyes were watching her every move. Whispers in the wind seemed to carry the anguished cries of the vanished souls, and the air became thick with a sense of impending doom. On the eve of the harvest moon, Gwen, along with the townspeople, gathered in the clearing near the ancient woods. The moon cast an eerie glow, illuminating the gnarled branches that seemed to reach out like skeletal fingers. The ritual began, and Gwen felt a chilling presence enveloping her, as if the shadows themselves were alive. Just as the ceremony reached its crescendo, Gwen witnessed a spectral figure emerging from the woods. The figure wore a tattered gown and beckoned her to follow. Driven by an inexplicable force, Gwen ventured into the heart of the forest, leaving the terrified townspeople behind. The ancient woods swallowed Gwen as she followed the spectral figure deeper into the darkness. The trees whispered secrets, and the ground beneath her feet seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. The spectral figure, revealing herself as Eleanor, a woman who disappeared decades ago, spoke of a pact with the shadows. Eleanor recounted how, in a moment of desperation, she had made a deal with an otherworldly force to save her ailing sister. The shadows granted her wish, but the price was steep, her own eternal servitude. Now, Gwen stood at the crossroads of a similar choice, as the shadows demanded a new soul to replace Eleanor's. Haunted by the stories of the vanished townspeople, Gwen hesitated. Dr. Blackwood, who had followed her into the heart of the woods, pleaded with her to resist the sinister bargain. He revealed that he, too, had once been tempted by the shadows and had narrowly escaped their clutches. As the moon hung low in the sky, casting long shadows that danced ominously, Gwen faced an impossible decision. The town's fate rested on her shoulders, 
and the weight of the choices made by those who came before her pressed upon her conscience. The shadows whispered promises of power and secrets that could reshape the world, but Gwen couldn't ignore the screams of the lost souls that echoed through the forest. In a moment of defiance, she rejected the shadow's offer, breaking the cycle that had plagued Ravenswood for generations. The woods trembled with a mix of anger and disappointment, but as the first light of dawn broke through the canopy, the shadows receded. The ancient curse that had gripped Ravenswood for so long began to lift, and the town was bathed in a newfound tranquility. Gwen emerged from the woods, changed but alive. The townspeople, still gathered in the clearing, looked at her with a mix of awe and gratitude. Dr. Blackwood, his haunted expression softening, nodded in acknowledgement. As the years passed, Ravenswood flourished and the memories of the dark times faded. Gwen, now a respected author, chronicled the town's history and the harrowing events that had unfolded beneath the shadowy canopy of the ancient woods. Yet, as Gwen walked through Ravenswood streets, she couldn't shake the feeling that the shadows, though dormant, lingered at the edges of her consciousness. The past, it seemed, was never truly forgotten, and the echoes of that fateful night continued to resonate in the quiet town of Ravenswood. Linda always had a fascination with old, abandoned places. There was something about the forgotten stories that echoed through the creaky floorboards and peeling wallpaper that drew her in. One day, she received a mysterious invitation in the mail. It was a faded, elegant card adorned with intricate patterns, inviting her to explore the long-forgotten Westbrook Manor on the outskirts of town. Despite a lingering sense of unease, Linda's curiosity got the better of her, and she decided to accept the invitation. On a cold, moonlit night, she approached the looming silhouette of Westbrook Manor, its windows dark and foreboding. The air seemed to thicken as Linda stepped inside, the door closing behind her with an ominous creak. As Linda wandered through the dimly lit halls, the walls seemed to whisper tales of the past. Flickering candles cast eerie shadows on the ornate wallpaper, and she could feel the weight of unseen eyes following her every move. The mansion held a secret, and Linda was determined to uncover it. In one room, she discovered an old portrait of a woman who bore a striking resemblance to herself. The eyes in the painting seemed to follow her, and a shiver ran down Linda's spine. The invitation, the portrait, it was as if Westbrook Manor had been waiting for her. Hours passed, and Linda found herself in a dimly lit study. There, she stumbled upon a dusty journal that detailed the tragic history of the Westbrook family. As she delved into the pages, Linda learned about a long-lost love, betrayal, and a curse that haunted the mansion. The journal spoke of a hidden room, a room said to hold the key to breaking the curse. Determined to unravel the mysteries of Westbrook Manor, Linda followed the cryptic clues from the journal, each step leading her deeper into the heart of darkness within the mansion. Linda's journey through Westbrook Manor became increasingly treacherous as she navigated secret passages and concealed chambers. The air became thick with a palpable sense of malevolence, and the mansion seemed to resist her intrusion. Nevertheless, Linda pressed on, driven by an insatiable desire to uncover the truth. In a forgotten corner of the mansion, Linda discovered the entrance to a hidden room. As the heavy door creaked open, she entered a chamber frozen in time. Dust-covered furniture and faded tapestries adorned the space, and a haunting melody played from a decrepit music box in the corner. The atmosphere grew tense as Linda sensed a presence in the room. Shadows danced on the walls, and an otherworldly chill filled the air. In the dim light, she spotted a worn-out diary that detailed the final moments of Elizabeth Westbrook, the woman from the portrait. Linda learned that Elizabeth had been unjustly accused of betrayal and condemned to a life of solitude within the hidden room. The curse that plagued Westbrook Manor was born out of Elizabeth's anguish and resentment, seeking revenge on anyone who dared to trespass. As Linda absorbed the tragic tale, a ghostly figure materialized before her, the tormented spirit of Elizabeth Westbrook. 
The room echoed with mournful whispers as Elizabeth revealed the key to breaking the curse, a selfless act of redemption. With newfound purpose, Linda vowed to free Elizabeth's spirit and lift the curse that had plagued Westbrook Manor for centuries. The mansion seemed to come alive with a malevolent force, testing Linda's resolve as she faced spectral apparitions and ethereal challenges. Guided by the clues from the journal and Elizabeth's ghostly guidance, Linda embarked on a perilous quest to redeem the Westbrook family's legacy. The mansion's secrets unraveled with each selfless act, revealing a path toward salvation. As Linda faced the final trial, the air grew still, and the mansion held its breath. With a profound act of compassion, she broke the chains of the curse, and Westbrook Manor seemed to sigh in relief. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, and Elizabeth's spirit found peace at last. Linda emerged from Westbrook Manor, the once menacing edifice now bathed in the soft glow of dawn. The invitation, the portrait, the curse, all were fragments of a tragic tale that Linda had played a part in unraveling. The town, oblivious to the dark history that had plagued Westbrook Manor, carried on, and Linda carried the weight of the haunted legacy she had laid to rest. Days passed since Linda's encounter with Westbrook Manor and an uneasy calm settled over the town. Though the curse had been broken, Linda couldn't shake the feeling that something lingered, shadows of the past that refused to fade away. Nightmares haunted her sleep, visions of ethereal figures and echoes of tormented whispers. Determined to find closure, Linda revisited the diary she had discovered in the hidden room. The pages hinted at unresolved mysteries, fragments of a larger puzzle that begged to be solved. The specter of Westbrook Manor continued to cast its long shadow over her, and Linda felt compelled to delve deeper into the history she had unraveled. Her investigations led her to the town archives, where she unearthed old newspaper clippings and faded records that hinted at a web of secrets woven through generations. Linda discovered a pattern of tragedy, betrayal, and unresolved grievances that reached beyond the Westbrook family. The curse, it seemed, was not exclusive to the mansion, but entwined with the very fabric of the town. As Linda dug deeper, she uncovered a forgotten burial ground on the outskirts of town a resting place for those whose stories have been erased from memory. The gravestones whispered tales of lost loves, shattered dreams, and lives cut short by the tendrils of a curse that transcended time. Haunted by the realization that Westbrook Manor was just one chapter in a larger, more ominous narrative, Linda felt a newfound sense of responsibility. The curse, she understood, could only be fully lifted by confronting the town's collective sins and bringing closure to the restless spirits that lingered in the shadows. Armed with determination and a growing sense of unease, Linda embarked on a quest to uncover the town's buried secrets. Each revelation brought her closer to the heart of the darkness that gripped the community. The townsfolk, unaware of the malevolent forces at play, continued their daily lives, oblivious to the impending reckoning. As Linda delved into the forgotten tales and untold tragedies, the shadows that clung to her soul deepened. The boundary between the living and the spectral realm blurred, and Linda found herself caught in a delicate dance between redemption and damnation. In the dim light of the town archives, surrounded by dusty records and forgotten stories, Linda vowed to confront the lingering shadows that haunted the town. The echoes of Westbrook Manor were but a prelude to a much darker symphony, and Linda, now intertwined with the town's haunted history, prepared to face the unspeakable truths that awaited her.